Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners all around the world, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. We are here to talk about uh, the latest pay-per-view that just happened this past Sunday. Uh, We are early on in the year, so of course that's going to be the Royal Rumble, but before we get into all of that, Kamish, Dan the Man, how you guys doing? Amazing. Going to WrestleMania. Amazing for what Destiny is bringing us towards WrestleMania. (laughs) Or what Destiny could have brought us but didn't. There we go. Oh, yeah, there's going to be... Well, it is is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to share our thoughts, opinions about how we felt about it. Um, Yeah. I'll go on record record saying it could have been better, (laughs) but it could have been worse. Yeah, I, 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 I feel the same sentiments. <laughs> I guess. Um, so as mentioned, the task at hand is the Royal Rumble review. But before we get into all of that, I want to introduce a new segment on the AWP uh, episode that we got going. And this will kind of be a regular thing. I call this the what segment. Basically, I'm going to present... You two with a this or a that. I want you to tell me which one you would choose and just a 15, 15 second uh, reasoning as to why you would choose it. So, gentlemen, okay. here we go for the first ever what segment. First question is wrestling trunks or wrestling tights? Kamish, let's start with you. Which one do you choose and why? Wrestling tights. Why do I choose tights? I, I, I just feel like you can do so much with tights. You can get away with so much color scheme, so much design. Uh, there's something about trunks, I don't know. Certain guys can pull it off, certain guys can't. That's just my sentiment. Fair. Dan, you? Um, I'll probably also go with tights. And the reason is because, uh, much like Mish just said, some guys can pull off the trunks. A lot of guys can't. Um, so if you cover the entire leg, uh, it looks like a pair of pants, and you can deck it out however you want, uh, and geometric patterns, they're your friend. My remarks is, I'm going to say trunks on this one. I've always felt like I've had a thing for trunks. Uh, not that I have a problem with ties. I just feel like trunks, it would be, if you're a wrestler, it would be much more easier to like move your legs around and you, you know, Especially if they're like skin tight, I I can imagine that could be comfortable uncomfortable when you're wrestling, but um yeah, just for that reason I choose uh wrestling trunks. So works for me. Uh, with that little uh segment out of the way, I uh, once again the main task at hand today is to review the two thousand and twenty one Royal Rumble pay per view. So. Match breakdown guy, Dan the Man, if you want to get us started, go right, go right ahead. <clears throat> All right, let's jump right on in. Show starts off, sort of, featuring Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler mm. defeating Asuka and Charlotte Flair for the, tag, mm. the Women's Tag Team Championships. 10 mm. minutes, 30 seconds. Huh. <sighs> Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. I believe that we all chose sh- uh, Charlotte. And oh, I have, I have that. Uh, everybody chose Oscar and Charlotte. We were all wrong. Yeah, I was hoping that they would retain because I think that Nia versus Shayna would be a much more marketable, marketable thing for Mania as opposed to having them going in as champions. I think that we're slowly going towards a Lacey Evans versus Charlotte Flair feud, possibly for Mania. I'm not sure. But then it's like, where does that leave Asuka? So it's just kind of a sticky situation where you don't really know what to make of it. Really, at its core, I think this match didn't make much sense. Really wasn't that interesting either. So those are just my remarks about that. Um... I could see, like, based on the fact that, and we'll get into this more, based on the the winner of the Women's Royal Rumble and who she's most likely to go face off against, uh, somebody like 
I don't know. Alexa Bliss may still come in to be a relevant challenger for Asuka for Mania. That seems like a pretty good match for, yeah. uh, to me. I think I, w- I would want that direct the, to be the direction at least for the Raw uh, Women's Championship match to Mania. The only reason why at first I, I, I was disappointed with the outcome is because taking off the belts from Asuka and Charlotte kind of gave me a preeminent doom of I swear to God if they were going to pull the trigger and give her a second Royal Rumble win I would have just shut off my phone I yeah, wouldn't I mean, even bother with the rest of the pay-per-view at that point that's not specifically where I went and I mean I got to get into this further with Charlotte being in I think it was she was the last three um I, I thought this was a little premature to take the belts off of them. I would have done that at probably whatever the next one is. Fastlane. Is it Fastlane or Elimination, Elimination Chamber? Elimination Chamber. I, I, think, I think it's Chamber then Fastlane. But I would I would have taken it off of them at one of the next ones. But, I mean, I guess they want to get the Lacey stuff started. So Yeah, everything is just like, it. Uh, none of this really makes sense, really. Because I feel like... They're trying to give Charlotte an independent feud, but she's tag team champion. And then Nia and Shayna lost it. Now they have it back. So it's just, it's a very confusing situation. Oh, what confuses me even more is who do you put those two up against now? Who, who, what, who's a viable tag team right now? Right. I, I could, yeah, I was going to say. Well, aside uh, from, I, from the Riot Squad. Like, like that you see. It is not deemed worthy of WrestleMania. I'm going to say this is a night two match. Well, here, here's the other thing I'll say. Because, well, I don't know if this will go all the way to Mania. But they are, uh, I think they just put Naomi and Lana in, a, in the number one contender spot on Raw, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. So we're going to see <laughs> the continuation of Nia and Shayna versus Lana. Uh, who wants... <laughs> What's the over-under that we see another table spot? <laughs> I'm going to go with the under 20. <laughs> anyway. Time will uh, Yeah, I, I, I do think this opened up three new matches to do to do the trade-off there. But I just think it was too early. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, do we have a grading system for this pay-per-view, boys? We can. For the whole thing? Well, like, I can add it up based on, the like, each match. Like, I, what, out of five for each match? Okay, I can live with that, yeah. So, for this uh, one, I'll give it a two, I guess. I think that's what you'd say. I'll give it a three. Um, I average it at two, so we'll say, th- we'll say 2.5 overall. Okay. That's fine. Okay, moving forward. Next. Oh, goodness. Uh, uh, The Scottish psychopath, Drew McIntyre, retaining the WWE Championship over the man, the myth, the retiree, Goldberg. Wow. (laughs) In a a two-minute, 32-second match. What does that Uh, mean? Like the first five minutes of mayhem before the bell rung uh they usually don't I, count it until the bell I, rings but we can make like a footnote of it okay yeah. so so roughly seven minutes of total total nonsense anyway so it goes they go real hot hot and heavy Ugh. um on the, on the finishers uh because i don't recall if there's really other than a headbutt any other moves yeah so, uh, yeah, you have the spear through the wall. You have Drew kicking out of the jackhammer. I think he might be the first one in years. Did did Brock? Yeah, Brock did. Yeah, Brock kicked out. Okay, so he's in the elite company at that point, um, which I'm assuming is part of the whole Goldberg's old. He st- he doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily have it uh, anymore type of deal, but. Uh, yeah, so Drew moves on to WrestleMania, presumably, or at least on the Elimination Chamber as the WWE Champion. 
Yeah, I'm going to be very honest. This was exactly what it needed to be. I can't really point out anything that's wrong or that I would do differently. Um, yeah, inserting Goldberg into a title match, I wouldn't have done. But considering the fact that that's what we got, uh, in the preview, I said, if this helps add on to Drew McIntyre's resume, I'm all for it. And that's a very good point, Dan. Uh, I, I honestly thought that after that last spear and the jackhammer, I thought that was going to be it. And then having him kick out, it kind of puts him in that elite category. Um, so, no, I didn't have too much of a problem with this. It was short. It was to the point. I think it's one of those things that maybe we might think back and remember when we remember Drew's title reign. So this was what it needed to be. I, I don't have like too much resentment towards it in any way. So that's that's just my and, and, and it's what we expect from Goldberg at this point is these short matches that am, that are basically just finisher, 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 winner. Yeah. Uh, what I do want to elaborate on here, which is jumping again just a little bit. Um, the following night on Raw, you have uh, the winner of the Royal Rumble come out and talk to Drew. And Drew's old buddy, Sheamus, comes on down to the ring and interjects. And when the Royal Rumble winner leaves the ring, Drew turns around right into a brogue kick, yeah. which, I don't know, I seem to remember saying something about the Royal Rumble match in the preview, saying I didn't want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do remember hearing that in so, another episode. I mean, I guess it's fine to pass off the time between now and Mania as long as it's... I, I'd like to see it end at Elimination Chamber and have that be the only time these two fight. I don't want this to be a long program. Wow. I mean, I, I kind of like that it's being set up that he's the next in line. Just because we kind of need a filler from now till Mania. I mean, I'll, I'll concede the Elimination Chamber and Fastlane then. I'll, I'll let them have up to two. I don't, I don't want to see them as the WrestleMania match. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think we're going to see the, them as the WrestleMania match. But to have them just maybe either one or both pay-per-views before Mania would be fine if we tend to exceed this anything further then it becomes a problem moving on uh great so, oh on this one um i'm gonna give it a five honestly this was exactly wow. what it needed to be okay i'm i'm gonna be the cynic and say i was hoping a little bit more i'll say four uh I was leaning toward three. I'll give it a four because it serves its purpose, but I would have I would have preferred a better match. Um, so I'm gonna go with the five, giving it what it is and what it needed to be. So it, it, it four point five. Sure. Okay. Well, if we had gotten three fives, it would have been a five. Well, you know, <laughs> if you take. A half of that off. Jesus. It wouldn't be ten. It would actually just be like nine ninety nine, which, uh, by the way, um, you can get the WWE Network for a non negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's right. It's not ten dollars. Well, apparently, it's not a thousand dollars or one million dollars. But just only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine until March. Uh, again, people, fans, boys and girls, listeners around the world, we will discuss that when we get more details. And I swear to God, I don't think I could change freaking subscriptions. <laughs> <Man>. <sighs> so moving on. At this yeah. point, we got. <laughs> The boss, uh, the Mandalorian, Sasha Banks, uh, retaining the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship against Carmella with Reginald by submission in a 10 minute, 25 second match, locking in that Reginald. statement and calling it a day. So, take it away, did fellas. She it, did she call it a new day or just the day? 
was trying to throw in a joke there. God. I didn't understand it. That's why. <laughs> Jesus. Well, New Day, uh, you know, New Day, the tag team. No, I, I, I understand New Day. What? what? You see the thing with, with the joke and not the ha 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 and the coinky dink and oh no, I've gone cross eyed. Oh goodness. So anyway. anyway, Reggie gets Reggie gets bumped out of the match, uh, I don't know, somewhere around the eight minute mark probably. Yeah. Yep. And uh I forget exactly how it played out, but uh he and Sasha come in some sort of contact and then the referee chucks him. Carmella complains the rest of the match, and then we get the uh, good old bank statement t- taps her out after Carmella falls on her face. So, I have this thing that I've kind of noticed when it comes to Sasha and the Royal Rumble. She gets a good moment, she gets a decent match with somebody, regardless of the outcome if she wins or loses, but it seems like once Royal Rumble's over... She heads her down a path that she doesn't get the exact moment she deserves coming at WrestleMania. Have you guys noticed this? It's kind of. Eh, I, I can but see what you're getting at. Here's an example. Who did she face two years ago? And yeah, we all wanted her to go. win. Uh, her. She faced yeah, her. The, again, it's, I need to remember the acronym, but... That's another day. Yeah, she faced her, but she won. Yeah. That was Sasha's supposed moment to, oh, she still had a good match. Yeah. Oh, wait, Mania comes. We're going to take the tag belts away. I'm just saying, like, that. that's just the sentiment of what I've noticed is the pattern for her. I don't want to see it. I want to see some kind of success, but, Sean, maybe you can play history advocate with me. Tell me otherwise. Um, yeah, when it comes to build up and WrestleMania itself, unfortunately, Sasha Banks has never truly had her moment. And I don't know if if the way that we're fantasy booking with Alexa and Asuka facing off at Mania, well, that pretty much leaves Bianca and Sasha going one on one, unless if Bianca decides to challenge for the NXT championship. But, um, yeah, I pull a Charlotte. What was that? You mean pull a Charlotte? Yeah, unfortunately. But, um, I mean, if Bianca does it, I don't have much of a problem because she just got on the main roster last year and they haven't done anything. And I feel like Bianca winning doesn't deteriorate anybody's momentum. So, but yeah, I don't really know. Like, yeah, we might get Bianca and Sasha at Mania, but the the match at the Royal Rumble was fine. It was there. I didn't really see anything that popped out. Um, I just hope that this feud now is over and both competitors can move on to something else. Fine. I'm fine with Sasha retaining. Um, I, I've read that people are more into Carmella's character now than when she was the princess of Staten Island. Yes, I agree. But uh, I would rather have Sasha at the top right now than Carmella. Yeah. Fair. Um, so, I, I'll give it a three and a half. Yeah, I'm on the same three and a half. Yeah, I'll, I can do that, three and a half. All right, so can even... All right, we're all voted on it. Three and a half out of five. All right. Well, moving on. In a 58 minutes, 50 second, 30 woman Royal Rumble, uh, Bianca Belair wins the match by eliminating Rhea Ripley uh, last. So, per the Sean's request, allow me to begin by listing the competitors. In this match, we had Bailey. Naomi, Bianca, Billy Kay, mm. Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah. Shane. Are you going to keep interrupting me? Shayna Baszler. I can't help it. It's just when you get to these names, I, okay, I was excited, and I will tell you why by the time you finish with number 30. Go ahead. Perfect. Tony Storm. Uh, cameo appearance by Jillian Hall. Ruby Riot. 
Victoria, Peyton Royce, Santana Garrett, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, Dana Brooke, Hall of Famer Tori Wilson, Lacey Evans, Mickey James, Nikki Cross, freelance agent Alicia Fox, sorry, former 24 7 champion Alicia Fox, Mandy Rose, Dakota Kai, Carmella, Tamina, Lana, Alexa Bliss, Ember Moon, Nia Jax, and Natalia. Now, do you want to know what makes me happy about that list of 30? As soon as I make this comment, I felt like I was doing the roll call for Saturday Night Live. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and your host, Natalia. <laughs> Go ahead. What would you like about the list, Commission? <laughs> that she wasn't even anywhere on it. Thank God. <laughs> Look, after the first 20, I started to dread life with the following nine. I already knew who number 30 was, but you still had nine more spots and nine more horrible opportunities for her to show up. Thank God she didn't take it. Thank you, God. Well, I wasn't so sure about the number 30 spot because I was thinking Natalia and her are like close friends. So I was thinking we would run into a deal where Natalia is backstage and she's been attacked. And she takes uh, Natalia's place. So I was kind of scared uh, they would go that route as well, which thank God they didn't. Well, that that's actually something I thought of too. I thought either that or like because she won the number 30 spot, she would be like, oh yeah, I'm coming out, but I'm actually giving away my spot. Yeah. For her. Well, I mean... Anyway, so the final three. Who was who was the other one? Who was the the fourth last person? Natty. Uh, uh, was it Natty? Yeah. yeah. So 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 Natalia goes. Charlotte goes, and then you have the what they haven't addressed is controversial yet, but we saw the picture. <laughs> Bianca. Bianca and Rhea with that spot where they both go over the ropes, and it looks like Bianca's feet are going to touch the floor. So, and if that catches enough fire online, they might have to at least address it in some way. So Rhea Ripley is our winner, then? Well, maybe. Like, they, I imagine you could make this an elimination, not an elimination chamber match, but a match at Elimination Chamber, where maybe Rhea says, hey, I've seen the footage, you've seen the footage, you know the truth. And Bianca goes, nah, I won the match in the square. And then they fight for who the ultimate winner is. You still have a chance to play around with the ability and the future of WrestleMania based on that. However, before the picture, as I was watching this live, even when watching it live, I, it looked like her foot touched the ground. Both feet but looked they, like but they, they touched they, the ground. But they ignored it. <laughs> Come on, was I the only one who saw it live and noticed it? I didn't notice uh, it. I... I, I didn't catch it, but that that picture is pretty damning. <laughs> Sean? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't catch it. I was too, too excited cheering for Rhea Ripley. Wow. I mean, okay. So this is one thing I wanted to address about the normal match. I wanted to at least get the moment of Alexa Bliss turning. Yeah. Full turn. But Rhea had to ruin it. I mean, Rhea. Knew the game plan. Good for her. Still upset that she ruined the moment. Especially because that's a, like, moment that you can only do at the Thunderdome. Like, when you have a live audience, you can't do that. So... Yeah, like, if you watch her match with Nikki yesterday, they did, like, six transitions. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, in my mind, it was like, well, you could have taken advantage of that and at least, like, had a memorable moment instead of squashing it before it even got started so real flat out she said nope not today satan not today (laughs) i am intrigued by the thunderdome though given this the situation that happened yesterday regarding alexa and nikki Mm -hmm. like these people can't possibly be watching it live then this like Uh. These have to be like pre-recorded people, yeah. Because you can't, 
Because you, I can't, I, I can't imagine that even pre-recording the episode that you would be like, okay, now unless you run the match twice, I guess. Like maybe no, that's what it is. That, well, I mean, logistically that would work, where you run it, one, run the whole match one time, and they get to see the ending, but you've got the key points, and then you take Alexa, put her in the back, change her her style, and put her put him back out to do the ending of the match. Yeah. But, I don't know, it was weird. Yeah, I will express my sentiments. Um, you guys know that I chose Bailey, and it seemed like for a second they were protecting her, because she was in there for, I think, a good 30 minutes. But then I think it was Bianca that tossed her out, and then I was thinking, okay, so maybe we might get the Alexa storyline that you two had sort of pitched, but then they threw Alexa out. So, I mean, like, Bianca is well-deserving of it. It's just, dare I say, I'm not too excited for a Sasha and Bianca match at Mania, if that's what we're going for, or a Bianca versus Asuka match, if that's what they're going for. Um, So, I, I just, I kind of, like, I don't know where to, like, go with that. Really, I, like... Logistically, Bianca made her debut after last year's Mania, but hasn't done anything of relevance since the beginning of this year. So, and it's not her fault. I'm not blaming her. I'm blaming the booking team and management. I think that if they built her up from last year's Mania to now, I would have maybe been a little bit more intrigued to be like, okay, yeah, I've been following her. I, I've seen you know what she's doing and all that. But because they haven't, I'm like, okay, sure, yeah, let's do it. But I'm just not excited for it, with all due respect. I mean, I think you could you could go, potentially, with a Bianca and Asuka. You could. Because you could have it be like, Asuka, you're one of the top people. And did they two ever get to fight down in NXT? Did they have a match? I don't think so. No, because you could have you could have that be sort of the underlying story is you, the EST wants to prove herself and Asuka is one of the most accomplished women in the entire company. So yeah, I mean, that's the that's the one direction to go. That to me personally, and this is just me, I don't feel the excitement with that with Asuka versus Bianca with Sasha. Yeah. I, I see the excitement just because of the fact that it's like, all right, she's a SmackDown superstar who I get, I understand where you're coming from, John. It, it's kind of like from late December to now, we've kind of been force fed Bianca yeah, before the rumble. And it's not as exciting as it could have been. Right. If it had been built up since mania of last year to now, then I, then I can see like, okay, there's the excitement factor. She just won. She's going to go for it with Sasha. I, I, I would understand that yeah. for sure. But because I guess booking was so terrible for her last year, and it's like, oh, now we're being spoon-fed by force, it's not as exciting to you, which I understand. I like the, the, the direction of her going towards Sasha, but I don't like it in the regards that Again, you you don't give Sasha that moment, yeah. Unless the moment yeah. in itself is all oh, you to get the main event of one night, right? And even then, it's like, does Sasha get upset that she only gets the main event, or does she get upset that she has to give the belt up? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerously thin ice that they are walking on with that because there's a couple of different things. And do you repeat history or and do do you have the main event? Like the, I, if you're doing a two night mania, it almost kind of makes sense that you would main event each night with one of your rumble winners. But uh, I I don't know what they I don't remember what they did last year. Uh... It was the because was it the two world champions? Charlotte wanted to face Rhea 
and see. Uh, I mean, for the main, I mean, for the main events. It was uh, the bon- it was two night last time too. It was the yeah. boneyard match for the first night, and then Drew and Brock for the second yeah. night. Yeah, that's right. So you had your Rumble winner on the second night, and then you had the the big marquee match. Mm-hmm. But you had both your Rumble winners on night two. One kind of opened the show; the other one closed it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends how they play it. I, uh, I don't know how to feel. I think that the the main problem is that they don't do long-term booking anymore. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yes. And so, I think that's kind of what you were talking about, is like, sure, Bianca's been around, and we know that they're high on her, but they didn't do anything to, like, build that excitement toward the prospect of her winning. Right. Because even going to... to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan made that pitch on Talking Smack or whatever, where he said, I haven't won a Royal Rumble match. I want to win a Royal Rumble match, and I will eventually face Roman Reigns. Okay. I was hyped. That's part of why I picked him. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen that match. That was more compelling to me than who we got. That yeah. was more compelling to me than Bianca. Yeah, and we'll get there, but... Let, let's just close this women's match out. What do you guys re- grade it? Uh, Four. I'm going to give it a three. But are you basing that because of the winner or the match itself? The match itself, like nothing stuck out too much. I will just say this. One thing that I thought was a little bit of a missed opportunity was how Billy Kay was waiting for a quote-unquote partner, the right partner to come uh-huh. out. I thought this would have been a perfect Iconics reunion, but... Yeah. It, it was so bad because I, I actually wanted the same thing. I wanted her to do everything she was doing. Everything was gold with that. Yeah. But she just had to choose... Yeah. Want to be pop star. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I, I would've, uh, I'll go if three and if I change my mind. If she waited for Peyton, it would have been fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it a three. A, a solid three. So, three and I a half. I dialed it down to three and a half. So. Yeah, the you, three and you, a half. You, you can lay it toward three. Oh, three? Okay. All right, three out of five. Uh, moving forward, Dan. All right. So, next on the card, we have the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, with the... Uh, what is his title? Is he an advocate, an associate? I don't know. Paul he's Heyman. An advocate. Legal counsel. <laughs> legal, I think he's legal counsel. I, I legal know. counsel for the tribal chief. As if there's the a... The reigning defending WWE Universal <laughs> Championship. As if there's an illegal uh, counsel. <laughs> uh, defeated Kevin Owens in a last man standing match. 24 minutes, 54 seconds. Um... So there was a hand- handcuff spot. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there was a botch. Yeah, it was uh, evident. Where the <laughs> apparently Paul was supposed to run in with the key, but the key the keyhole was on the wrong side, and so they ran out of time to sell the the like right up to the buzzer thing. So then they had to improvise. Yeah, yeah. Everything was fine in this match up until that. <laughs> Um, and I, then ultimately, I this match. yeah, and then ultimately Roman gets the, gets the win off the guillotine choke. Yeah. My sentiment is that this was match of the night. If I'm being completely honest, match yeah. of the night, a lot of high spots. Once again, Kevin Owens looking, looking like a million bucks and Roman, you know, playing that heel and taking advantage of the circumstance. You know, there's a moment where when he's handcuffed, you're like, oh, he's going to get counted out. And then I picked it out because the referee was standing like right on top of him. And so Roman just like yanks him across and hits him across one of the uh, electronic uh, billboards or whatever. But Yeah, that was a good spot. Yeah, but I said this in the preview that if they can take this until Mania, which... It seems like I think they will because if you look at it, the wins that Roman got last night was, again, circumstantial because Kevin Owens had the match won. And then Roman Reigns, oh, yeah. you know, yanked the referee and Paul Heyman comes in, gets him out of the handcuffs, and then Roman takes advantage. But, um... Well, I mean, Paul Heyman got him out in 20 seconds. 
<laughs> I counted it. Believe me, it was 20 seconds. It seemed longer than that. 25? Kind of longer. It seemed like an entire minute they were trying to, like, you know... Because there was a moment where for like 15 yeah. seconds the camera panned over to Kevin Owens and he's like trying to get up but he's selling it so he's kind of staying down because he's waiting for Roman to get out of the handcuffs. But, and I um, think at one point the camera panned directly to Paul Heyman and his hands probably, just to get yeah. him out. Yeah. But um, I, th- th- despite that, I can forgive that. It like it happens in wrestling. But um, I I enjoyed this match. I'm actually enjoying this feud. If we're being honest, Dan, you were just talking about long term booking. I'm not saying this is like, you know, the best storyline ever. But I dig it. You know, like it's up there. I think for SmackDown, while the the Fiend and Alexa and Randy thing is interesting on Raw, I think that the Kevin Owens and the Roman Reigns and the Jimmy Uso and the Adam Pierce element on SmackDown is it has been an awesome storyline. If I'm being completely honest, I agree. This, this is entertaining. This, this is the the type of story that I think we need right now. And the only reason I think why it's going in such a good direction. Look who's involved in the story. Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman. Yeah. Without him, I think this would have gone south real quick. And plus, I did like. In the match, I don't know if you guys noticed it, uh, when Roman had the cuffs and he's trying to get Kevin cut first, how he's telling him, I need this. You do not understand. I can't go home without this belt. You're right. not going to take this away from yeah. like That just shows not only like like who he's becoming, but like that heel desperation too. Like, you're not taking my momentum from me. I'm no one yet. Yeah. I'm digging it. I know that we've trashed Roman Reigns, the character, because he was shoved down our throats and the booking wasn't good. But I'm going to be honest, this heel turn started off a little bit goofy and acknowledge me, acknowledge me, acknowledge me. And it just it became so repetitious. But I think that especially since the beginning of this year, um, Paul and Roman like awesome. I think they're bouncing off of one another. And I honestly think it wouldn't work because we were so used to seeing Paul and Lesnar, Paul and Lesnar. And it's like now I think there's going to come to a point where it's like, yeah, Paul and Lesnar were, you know, a staple in, in the WWE. But do you remember that time where he was, you know, the legal counsel for Roman? I, I feel like people are going to remember this, you know? Yeah. And plus, whenever you have Paul Heyman advocating for someone else, like in the past, when Heyman left Brock for what, Big Show and Angle, I think at one point? Yeah. Everybody liked those angles, too, because it's like, okay, he's showing, like, oh, I don't need Brock Lesnar. I can grow anyone yeah. if you put them in my hands. Right. Yeah, he's the star maker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've enjoyed Tribal Chief Roman. I would like to see more from it because it seems like it's been very contained up to this point. Um where it almost seems like the entire story has taken place in a single room, if that makes sense, um, instead of an entire house. So I would like to explore the rest of the house. Yeah. Like, see why he's the head of the table, right? Why he's in charge. Yeah. That type of thing. And, and, yeah. and they, they, they suggested that maybe a faction was coming. I'd like to get that rolling. I saw today Jay's not cleared to perform right now. I don't know what happened to him. And Jimmy was still on the shelf, but I'd like to see that become a thing. I would like to explore this universe and this family more than what we've gotten to see so far. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Definitely. So, boys, what would you grade this? I'll give it a safe four, four and a half. Yeah, I was going to say 4.5. Alright, I'm on the same boat, so... Let's just round this. Well, no, no. Four and a half is fine. I don't want to give this a perfect five because if we didn't get the botched spot, it would have been a yeah. perfect five. Yeah. All right. So, closing out the night, we have the 30 man Royal Rumble match. Uh, one hour, 32 seconds. And the match ends with the Hall of Famer. Entrant number one, Edge, eliminating. Entrant number two, the Viper, the Apex Predator, the Legend Killer, Randy Orton. 
So let's go down this list now. Here we go. Because there's a, there's a couple of interesting ones. I thought one was pretty on the nose, which I'll make a comment about. But we start off with Edge, Randy Orton, Sami Zayn, Mustafa Ali, Jeff Hardy, Dolph, Dolphin Ziggler, Shinsuke Nakamura, Carlito making his uh, long-awaited return, Xavier Woods, Big E Langston, John Morrison, Ricochet, WWE stands for Walk with Elias, Damian Priest coming up from NXT, The Miz, Riddle, Daniel Bryan, the other half of Team Hell No, Kane, that's the one I was talking about, coming in at spot 18 for his 18th Royal Rumble. Uh, it's, a li- it's a little on the nose. I, I wasn't crazy about that when I caught it. <laughs> but, moving on, King Corbin, Otis, Dominic Mysterio, Robert Lashley, Hurricane Helms, Captain Charisma, my boy, Christian, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, Sheamus, Cesaro, Hashtag. Seth Rollins. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cesaro. Thank you. Thank you. And number 30, Braun Strowman. Okay, before we discuss, obviously, who won out of the 30, are there, aside from number 18, is there anyone that st- stood out to you? Other than the 18 and Captain Charisma, which we heard from Dan, did any one of those other 28 stand out? Carlito was a part in the pun. Carlito was pretty cool to see back. He was jacked. I, I mean, he I made, noticed that on Raw, too. Yeah, he got, I was, was like, going to say. I don't, bulky, man. I don't know if this is like a, a deal now, if he's like coming back as a part-timer or what, but I'm digging it. Uh, anyone else that stood out? Uh, Seth is back. I think we kind of talked about that. Uh, no, can not, I say not, I was, dis- I was kind of disappointed with Seth's return? Yeah, it was a little mm, toned down. I, uh, admittedly, here's what I would have liked to have seen with Seth. I would have liked to have seen Burn It Down. Yeah. I would like That's to have I dropped thought. SmackDown Savior. That's what I wanted. Like, I wanted him to just, like, just tease that whole SmackDown Savior return. After the pyro goes off, you hear burn it down. Yeah. And he, he doesn't walk in like, oh, it's me, I'm your savior, I've returned. No, just stands there for a few seconds and just go runs in and just tries to start kicking ass. Yeah. I would have preferred that. Um, I'm not going to lie. Damian Priest did stand out a lot to me just because he sold it that he, he's ready for the main roster. Yeah. I I don't like the bow and arrow thing that he does. <laughs> kind There's of a Luke Harper esque. Yeah. I, I, what was that? I said it was kind of Luke Harper esque because Luke Harper used to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Because he, he does the, the arm out, he does the very slow string pull, and it's just, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't know why that has to be a thing. I'd rather he just stop doing it. Fair. And then, but anyway, yeah. go ahead. Uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my list of, like, who stood out to me, and, uh, all right. I, there, I think I've said it all. But let's talk about the match itself before, and then get to the winner. So what I will say about... Oh, well, you said before we get to the winner, or...? Yeah. Oh. Uh, like if, so is there, there any spots in the match that you guys like? I... Well, I wasn't crazy about almost pulling Diggy out of the ring and then chucking him over the announce table. Yeah, that was kind of it. Got repetitive because I think he did it like two or three times. Uh, uh he he eliminated Ray and Biggie. Yeah. Um, 
that's the thing is I, 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 I also wasn't crazy about Edge and Christian coming face to face with Riddle because I don't care about Riddle but I like seeing the two of them come back together Jesus I can't really say that there is a me- like and that's the thing too is I feel like in Rumbles you need to have memorable spots um, like I know that they kind of they kind of reignited a feud between Xavier and who was it with Mustafa is that yeah? I think that's what it was, and I'm like, okay, I, like I can appreciate the fact that you're like paying attention to that, but other than that, I can't really think of a spot or like a throwback to a particular feud or anything like that that stood out. Um, it's like people just came and people got thrown out, and then we're down to the last four, and that's it. It's kind of a blur. I will say this. There was the disappointment, even though he wasn't my pick. Seeing Biggie thrown out, seeing Daniel Bryan being thrown out, like immediately as I saw them being thrown out, I'm like, okay, we're going there. Goes that idea. There goes that idea. And then I'm like, okay, well, I don't want my pick to fully come true yet. Oh no, now this person's eliminated. And it's like, okay, I guess my pick is going to come true, but. I think what what made me laugh was uh, AJ's moments in the uh, Royal Rumble match. Just the fact that he had, you know, his big badass bodyguard right there to help him. Yeah. At certain spots, it's kind of like yeah, there's the the, right. the one where like he was tipping backwards and he just shoved him back up. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like AJ didn't even realize it. What what happened? What the hell happened? I guess you can say AJ is getting more than one push. No, um, I, I, I'm looking at, at that, and I. So I mentioned almost eliminated Ray and Biggie. Uh, is there any interest or possibility that we maybe see Biggie, AJ, and Ray in a triple threat here in a, a month or so? Like, for, to just, like, for what reason? For the Intercontinental title. Oh. Maybe. Possibly. Um. I, th- I think that would be, uh, I think that would be a good match. I don't think we've seen a, the pairing of those three. And you, you, uh, we might even get an Elimination Chamber match for the IC title. Throw Sammy in there. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, no, I, is the IC title worth fighting for in, in that type of match, though? Uh, they've done it before, haven't they? <laughs> well, haven't they? Are the tag team titles worth fighting in an elimination chamber it's, match? It's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> I didn't say it's, it's worthy, but I have said it's interesting. Well, if you want to make that title relevant again, I suppose you have to start <laughs> having people contend for it in high-stakes matches like that, but... Um, it, it is. It's also frustrating that we've been talking about making the IC title relevant again for what six years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, do we want to get to the What if we have a, an elimination chamber match for the twenty four seven title? Oh Jesus! <laughs> is that doable? Are I, six, I don't know. Are more than maybe are more than six people even allowed in the chamber at that point? <laughs> maybe you just shove four people in each pod. And then you end up with a match with like thirty five people. Oh dear God! It's stupid. <laughs> uh, well, just the fact on. that there was even a twenty four seven match in a Rumble match is already just <laughs> what the hell. Honestly, it's ty- uh, it's ty- um, okay. it's typical WWE overexposing an idea. Um, we've talked about before how like you could have made that title see like seem like it was something give it a lot of prestige and just a lot of history but they keep on doing the same thing over and over again and honestly it's like okay i don't care anymore our truth has four that i thought we were higher than that it says 48 times yeah really 48 wow i thought i thought he was at like 70 at this point <laughs> Do we want to get to the winner of the match? Yeah, let, let's move on. Let's move right to it. Look, we who it was what Edge Christian? Ran, uh, no, not Randy. Edge Christian Seth, and who was the fourth? Braun. 
Okay. But here's here's what I noticed. You kind of could predict at that moment when you see who gets eliminated one by one, the ending coming. But I love the fact that they teased that Randy didn't have to participate at all to make it to the end. That's the one thing I liked about the spot. Yeah, I, I knew that they were going to like have Randy come out at the last minute. Because um, I know they were kind of like going for like an Austin and McMahon Royal Rumble 99 deal where those two start off and then one guy kind of stays in the ring, the other one sort of goes the around the arena. For the night. Yeah, until we're down to like the last few and then, oh, here we go. The first two guys that started the Rumble are now standing in the ring during the final moments. But, well, um, I kind of, I felt it coming as soon as like, what, was Seth the last one out? Yeah. For Randy K. Okay. Yeah. So as soon as Seth was out, I'm like, the bell hasn't rung yet. I, I already know what the twist is. Randy's back in somewhere. Yeah. And the camera guy does it so well to hide him up until like, oh, pan to the right a little. There's an RKO. Right. Guys, yeah, and then you, you and then you tease that. Um. So I guess I'll give my sentiments about the whole thing. I'm gonna be honest. Like I wrote it. Uh. Like. I think half hour after the Royal Rumble ended, I thought this was a very poor choice for a Royal Rumble winner. Um, I honestly thought that we could have given it to somebody else. There was a lot of like full-time contenders that you could have given it to because Edge doesn't need it. He can still go to Mania. He can still have his title shot. He can still do all that. Like I would have mind if, Edge didn't win the Rumble, but in Elimination Chamber, you would have it be whoever wins this Elimination Chamber match goes on to WrestleMania um, and can face whatever champion that they want. Because um, I know for like a few years they did that where you would have a Royal Rumble winner, then a Elimination Chamber match winner, and then each person would kind of pick a title to go after. But um, I, th- I honestly thought Daniel Bryan would have been a great selection considering the fact that he had teased that he would like to do that program with Roman. Of course, I was utterly disappointed when Cesaro got eliminated because I thought this could have been his opportunity. Um, Yeah, I just, I don't, I'm sorry. I, I said it in our preview episode, with all due respect, I love Edge. I respect him to death, but he really didn't need this Royal Rumble win. That's it. Dan? Uh, same boat. I would have preferred a slightly different outcome, uh, because we had better, longer term story booking with somebody like a Daniel Bryan. I am intrigued for now to see where we go with Edge, but I do think it's a peculiar choice. Okay, so you guys know in the preview episode I, I called him winning. Yeah. But I only called him winning because I just had the idea of, okay, he wins it, he does this program to win a belt, and then that belt gets dropped to someone deserving in, on the full-time roster. And they do it in such a good fashion of doing it. Now, the fact that Edge is is doing this like, oh, I'm going to tease everybody. I'm going to go to each brand yeah. and tease who I want to face. Because he already dropped the hint on Twitter that, oh, NXT needs, needs to get rated R. Yeah. We already saw him on Raw. Obviously, we know he's going to go to SmackDown on Friday. If we're going to call it. Yeah. Um, I think I said what? And I'd be okay if Daniel Bryan or Big E or Cesaro would win. I would have preferred one of those three, especially Daniel Bryan, since he is on that final momentum of like, hey, you know, a few more matches and I got to call it a part-time career for my kids. Yeah. You know? Um, 
but yeah, there, there, there was moments in this in this Royal Rumble match. I'm like, all right, these are good, these are decent highlights. But it's like your winner, yeah, like yes, I I was right, I called it, but was I really that excited? Not really. I, I was kind of let down because it's like we can do so much with so many other people right now. What I want to chime in with is just that now the question is, do you? Put the belt on Edge, or does somebody else get to add him to their uh, list of conquests? Because if you have him win, you're derailing somebody. Yeah. Like Drew and you're, you're Drew. You're derailing Rowan, both, them hard. Yeah. They're both in a position where they shouldn't lose to him. The only other thing I could see maybe happening is. I don't. Maybe Miz gets involved again. He's still got the thing, doesn't he? Yeah. So maybe that's that's our way out. But either way, that's throwing somebody's story off. I wouldn't. There's a. There are a handful of programs if Edge is able to go and they put the belt on him that I wouldn't mind seeing. Because I know there was the long-standing thing of one more match. For Christian, I, yeah. if I saw he's cleared for cleared to perform again, so you could have Edge win. You have those two have a title match. I think people would get a kick out of that. Yeah, you could see Daniel Bryan and Edge, which we never got to see. That would be a really good match. Um, and I saw some people clamoring about maybe Edge and the Miz even having a match because Miz is not like Miz is not a bad wrestler at this point. He he's definitely improved over the years and. I, I appreciate him for everything that he is. Yeah. So there, there, there are possibilities, but it, it, it's at somebody's expense. Yeah, I want to bring up two points. Um, number one, Kamish, I know you had that idea of Edge winning and then later on laying down and doing the favors for a full-time competitor. Which is fine on paper, but really when you look at it, when you do it like that... You are depriving someone from a Royal Rumble win, and you're depriving them from a WrestleMania spot. And I'm talking about a full-time, you know, contender. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, And my second thought is that, have you guys realized that this entire pay-per-view kind of has this ongoing trend of feeling like everything is just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Like, we talked about the Charlotte and Asuka and Shayna and uh, Nia match. And how everything seemed like it was kind of off place. You know, we talked about um, the Women's Royal Rumble. How Bianca, we don't necessarily have a problem with personally. But it just seems like it's not in the right time, in the right place. And now with the Men's Royal Rumble match, it's like, again, we don't have a problem with Edge personally. But it's just wrong time, wrong place. So it just seems like it's this pattern that occurred throughout the Rumble where it's like, yeah, sure, he can win, she can win, but is it the right, like, is it time to pull the trigger on that particular person, you know? Yeah. But you're saying, like, this whole pay-per-view, aside from one match, has gone in the completely wrong direction with a lot, no, actually two matches. So the, the remaining four matches that we kind of have an issue with has taking the boat in the wrong direction and i mean i see that i see that perfectly because it it, it's showing like it's like yay i don't like this yeah and like i get it the fact that everybody feels like their fantasy booked idea is the best route to go i i I don't know i just this year the, the rumble winner just didn't click with me Like you look at it, like you look at two years ago where your winners were Becky and Seth and how appropriate it was for both of those superstars to win. Um, You look at last year, the men's Royal Rumble, how appropriate and how that propelled Drew into now being champion this time around, you know, for the Rumble. So it's like you, you, I feel like for these matches, you kind of have to feel it out and be like, okay, where is this person momentum wise? Where are they in space and time? Where do we go from here? And I just feel like with like a Bianca Belair, oh, around December, we're going to start to get serious with you. And then we're just kind of going to have you on each and every episode, completing obstacle courses and beating 
the longest reigning former women's champion. And then come Royal Rumble, we're going to pull the trigger. It's like, okay, that's fine, but I don't have enough to be invested. So, yeah, everything just kind of feels off. And I know that we still have Elimination Chamber and Fastlane. And God knows that in previous WrestleManias, things have changed miraculously until we get to Mania. But I just feel like I'm not really digging any of their planned storylines for Mania. Final grade for this match. Um, four. Yeah, I'll I'll be nice about it and give it a four. Sure. All right, four it is. That's my rating too. So overall, this entire pay per view, if three matches were over a four, it would have been hit four out of five. But unfortunately, one match alone brought it down by a lot, and we had two matches that were. Hey, so, this pay-per-view gets a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah. Again, could be worse. Could be better. Yeah, exactly. Could be better. Could have been way better. Um, but, with that said, um, if we want to move on to Raw for just a second, I know that it seems like right now they're proposing this whole thing between Drew and Sheamus. Which, I gotta be honest, I don't have much of a problem with, simply because Sheamus hasn't been in the title picture for a while. And he's not exactly a legend at this point who's part-timing. He's there religiously. So, um, I don't mind seeing this program. Uh, and if there is a fast lane, then I guess, yeah, this will probably get extended until then. Uh, until we see what happens at Mania. But, um... Again, the Alexa and Fiend and Randy storyline, I think, is getting to a point where we're going to see the Fiend versus Randy at Mania. And uh, I think Charlotte and Lacey are going to have their own feud as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, things seem relatively decent at this point. So those are my remarks. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'll give my remarks after Dan. I'm going to write down these idea of matches. And I say by the time we get past fast lane, let's revisit these and see if this is what comes to fruition. If not, obviously we'll talk about it. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Alright, Dan, how did you feel about Raw? Um again, it, it, it planted the seeds for Drew and Seamus, which I don't want to be a long running program. I appreciated that they have continued the Randy Orton and Fiend teasing since we're anticipating a Firefly Funhouse match for Mania. Um, we saw Charlotte and Charlotte walk out on Asuka during the tag match, so they're about done. Yeah. And, yeah, I think there was a handful of other miscellaneous things, but n n nothing of too much merit. Um, okay. I also don't know if they're planting seeds to split up the Hurt business, because I know that MVP and Lashley kind of got in each other's faces. But um, if we're being entirely serious, I don't think that the Hurt business faction has really taken off for it to already be over, which has kind of been an ongoing theme, really, with uh, pushes and title reigns and tag teams and stuff like that. So... Um, yeah, honestly, like, it's it, it's a mess right now, really, when you look at the, like, landscape. I, it's just everything is a cluster. So right now I have Alexa Bliss slash Fiend versus Randy. Sheamus versus Drew until Fastlane. Charlotte versus Lacey buildup. Is there anything else I need to write down to revisit in the future? I think for right now, that's it. I can't really put together any other matches that I think potentially might be at a Mania or before then. Okay, Dan? Uh, no, I, th I think we'll ride it out a couple more weeks and, and see if anything new starts to flare up. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say I'm, I'm hoping for that Firefly Funhouse match at Mania between Fiend and Randy, hopefully... We get a, a more kind of scarier, more demon-esque 
version of the fiend. Yeah. Of course, he was set on fire, quote unquote. I do want to see this Sheamus versus Drew thing end at Fastlane, if not beforehand, because I, I don't know. I just don't like this program personally. The Charlotte versus Lacey thing. I like to see it built up to Mania. I mean, we, we kind of get Charlotte out of any title picture rate or or trying to go for a title. We see her for once be a competitor again. Yeah. Because we don't need Charlotte and the championship match being shoved down our throats for another Mania, personally. Oh, I don't want to see it. Yeah. I really don't. Agreed. Yeah, uh, that, that's just me. Yeah, so do we have any final remarks about the Rumble or the Raw after? No, I'm good. Good? Okay. So, there you go, guys. We just gave our review of the 2021 Royal Rumble pay-per-view along with uh, the latest rendition of Raw. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let us know what you guys thought of the 2021 Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Once again, on behalf of myself, the commission, Dan, the men, we hope everybody out there is staying home and staying safe from everything that's going on in the world right now. Thank you so, so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time.